Welcome back and thank you very much. I want to encourage you to wash your hands regularly with soap and under running water and to use uh, your hand sanitizers, eat a lot of fruits and veggies, clean them very well, vitamin C preferably, so orange, pineapple, uh, apples and all those citrus fruits that you can find on the market, homegrown, eat them and drink a lot of water, exercise regularly and observe the hygiene protocols that have been announced by the Ghana Health Service. The Daily Graphic this morning says, Mission Hospitals face power disconnection. They owe between 3,000 and 3 million Ghana cities. Help contain spread of COVID-19. Mahama tells former appointees, citizens set up, uh, step up measures against COVID-19 infection. COVID-19, opportunity to self-produce, according to President yesterday as he met the uh, captains of industry and regulators as well. The Ghanaian Times, Christians, Muslims join fight against COVID-19. Let's fight COVID-19 together. President Tax Ghanaians. Coalition of CSOs call for termination of Unipass deal. COVID-19 outbreak scare in Tema as patient deserts hospital for home. The Daily Guide, Alima launches gender equality project as a minister for gender, uh, the minister for local government, I beg your pardon. Coronavirus locks us down. Be innovative, according to Nanado Danko Kufado. So, Gakope Assemblyman's killers nabbed. It comes with a photo of three suspects on the front page. Co Easter cancelled an Opuni trial, not political, the judge says so. The Finder newspaper. COVID-19 to fuel local production to reduce import dependency, according to President Akufuado. Chief Imam tells Muslims to abide by President's directive on COVID-19. One Ghana movement calls for sanctions against self-quarantine evaders and 30 people in self-isolation over Obuasi COVID-19 case. My guest this morning is the Honorable... Um, Andu Ejapa Mesa. He's the member of parliament for the second D constituency and also the Honorable Al Hassan Suhini. He is the member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency and both gentlemen want to go back to parliament. I wish them well. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Johnny. Thank you well, very much. We are surviving. We are observing uh, social distances. It's, <laughs> it's important that we do. Yesterday, the, the president met um, captains of industry and he said one striking thing, the fact that COVID-2019 presents as a golden opportunity to look within, to start producing, and for good reason, the governor of the Bank of Ghana was there, and the president mentioned, I remember clearly that, the fact that businesses complain of not getting access to money or funds because of high interest rates and plenty other things. Is the president thinking in the future, or is this just looking around to say what he had to he had to say a long time ago or is this a very good call that we've been waiting for i'll start with you Bobo. well let me say good morning to my colleague uh, alan sanandi your good self i cherish viewers this morning particularly my constituents in the second day <clears throat> and to also add my voice to the need for us to be cautious mm. uh, stick to the protocols, uh, shouldn't create any panic out there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are not in normal times, but it is not the case that coronavirus is killing everybody mm -hmm. who gets mm -hmm. affected. I mean, they are like Dr. Okoboy mm -hmm. ably educated all of us yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do some basics, washing hands, right. keeping safe, we, we are going to be fine. Uh, I, I was not surprised yesterday when I had the news mm -hmm. that His Excellency the President had met uh, some senior bankers mm -hmm. and captains of industry to, as it were, deliberate on the opportunities that we can, mm -hmm. in the midst of this adversity, mm -hmm. where clearly the supply chain globally mm -hmm. has been disrupted because of the coronavirus, for us to, as it were, look within okay. and try and ramp up the need for us to industrialize. Uh, my surprise, my, or my absence of surprise really, mm. is because uh, of the policy that has been touted by His Excellency the President since he came to office of the need for us to industrialize. Hence the one district, one factory mm. and the other nine pillars of the industrialization plan that the Trade Ministry has launched and is managing. Mm. We all are aware. I mean, uh, that for us to get out of 
import dependency, uh, strengthen our currency. The way to go mm -hmm. is to industrialize. And so this government has, over the past three years, mm -hmm. been touting that, supporting the private sector to, as it were, set up across the country. Mm -hmm. Of course, previous governments, I'm sure, also did some industrialization activity. But this, under His Excellency Donato Danko Akufuado, mm -hmm. has been focused, has been targeted, has been directed with a clear view of import substitution and export. Okay. Of course, very recently we passed the Income Tax Amendment Act that clearly sets some regime mm -hmm. for auto manufacturing. And as part of that regime that we passed, mm -hmm. ban the importation of vehicles over 10 years. Yeah. Uh, you know that uh, importing vehicles over 10 years mm -hmm. In themselves are not allowed right. except that when you bring them in then you pay a penalty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay we've done away with a penalty system and said that salvage vehicles that do not have clean title and also vehicles that are over 10 years mm. should not be brought in purely with a view to encouraging industrialization, industrialization and manufacturing of uh, and assembly mm -hmm. of vehicles in our country and so his excellency the president meeting captains of industry and key bankers because they are the ones mm. who are supposed to be providing the funding mm. and we all hear of the cry of the cost of capital mm. in, in our parts of the world clearly our uh, interest rate regime cannot be sustainable did they and have so, to take the COVID-2019 outbreak or pandemic for such a meeting as crucial as this to have happened? Well like I said it's not the of course this policy has been with us, mm -hmm. His Excellency the President has spoken at least on a few occasions on the need for us to uh, uh, bring the cost of capital mm -hmm. down. Uh, mm -hmm. I've heard him uh, admonish the central bank government, bankers mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. that look, uh, policy rate is trending downwards. Yeah. That necessarily ought to reflect in the rates that the commercial banks fix, and that doesn't seem to be happening. But with every situation, mm -hmm. you ought to mm -hmm. find the positives, mm -hmm. okay, and to highlight them. And of course, get people to refocus their energies mm -hmm. to generate some good dividends out there. Okay. Clearly, in the past, of course, China was full, was in full production steam. Mm -hmm. You know, the international logistics chain had not been affected. Mm -hmm. And so, people found it easy, uh, much more cost effective mm -hmm. to import rather than produce. Now that the system has been disrupted, it re-emphasizes the need for us to refocus our energies to get our people who are in industry. Are we ready? To, I guess that it's not an event. Okay. It's a process. Mm -hmm. We all are now aware that when we are faced with a global pandemic of this nature, it has the potential to disrupt the global economy. Mm. And so we ought to begin to think of looking inward. Okay. And that process, I guess, and of course, we never know when another pandemic is going to strike us. So it's okay. important <coughs> that we all channel our energies, particularly those who are engaged in those fields. Mm. Clearly, with government support, the Bank of Ghana support, with banking mm. sector support, so that we have a comprehensive outlook to ensure okay. that going forward, we produce for ourselves mm. so that in the very unlikely event that mm. this situation confronts us again, at least there would be sufficient production within our country okay. to meet the needs of our people. Thank you. Page three of the Daily Graph it says, while praying the almighty God to shield the country from an increment in infections, the president noted that should there be an increase in the incidence of infections, the country would be presented with a significant challenge. With the meeting having in attendance bankers, pharmaceutical giants and regulators of industry, the president expressed the hope that together in this coalition, we can then begin to address these deficiencies in systemic and pragmatic manner. So I call you here for all of us to put our brains, minds and hearts together to see the way forward for the future of our country. Whatever decisions are made today are not going to transform the situation today or tomorrow. 
but then we are going to put in the building blocks the platform for the transformation of tomorrow he added so really, are you seeing the future as the president sees it well um once again let me also say good morning to you good morning to bobo and uh, good morning to our viewers mm. especially the very good people of the tamale north uh, constituency mm. uh, i also will stand in earlier um, admonitions to viewers and the general public uh, to observe the protocols mm. that we have all been uh, informed of mm. as we uh, try to control the spread of this deadly uh, COVID-19. Mm. I think also uh, in the midst of the, if you like, low-key panic, mm. it is important that we share some good news mm. when we come across it, mm. just so that people mm. uh, do not uh, uh, panic. Right. And, right. and, and <laughs> you know, that can lead to uh, even more disastrous consequences. Mm. So, for example, we do know that mm. now China um, has taken a curve right. uh, from over, I think, uh, thousands of mm. cases mm. recorded a day. Mm. Now they have less than 20 cases it's dropping. You know, yeah. recorded a day. Uh, some schools are mm. beginning to reopen in China, and that is where you know this whole virus started. Right. Right. So um, there is hope. Mm. If you also look at the recovery rate mm. in general, I mean, uh, over 70,000 people so far mm. who have had the virus mm. uh, have recovered. Right. Tom Hanks, I'm mm. told, mm. and the wife have been discharged from hospital. They have recovered. Mm. So uh, it is not, yeah. you know, uh, 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 that bad. Mm. And again, uh, we are told a vaccine, right. you know, is now being tested. Right. And hopefully once we have a vaccine, then we can say we have it under uh, control. So, in the midst of all of this, mm. it's important that we let people know that and, and it's not an Amagidon yet. Right. You know, and, and still, and boy said yesterday that still you can actually recover on your own immune system uh, exactly if you have a strong exactly. immune system. And that is where my vitamin C in my pocket. Yeah, and that is where and that is where <laughs> I must also add, apart from all the uh, things you uh, earlier mentioned mm, that mm, we should uh, mm, observe. Mm. Uh, I will also say that one other thing that is encouraged is for mm. us to be active. Yeah. So yes, it's okay to uh, uh, as much as possible stay mm. home or stay in the office mm. if you don't have anything that requires that you go out. But right. you must, even in that yeah. space, mm. still be active. It's important mm. uh, to be to be active. Now, on the meeting that the president had mm. with um, uh, captains of industry yesterday. Um, it's 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 all well and good, but I think that one would have expected such meetings earlier than now, because such a meeting is not only as important. I mean, it's not only important for the fight against co coronavirus. Mm. I mean, it's it's something that we require as a nation. Okay. I recall um, um, in 2013, mm -hmm. uh, even before. Uh, former president Mahama was uh, legitimately uh, stamped mm. by the Supreme Court as uh, the elected president. Mm. Uh, he met with the captains of industry. He met with AGI, the pharmaceutical industry and all of that and, and assured them of mm. a stimulus package that his government was going to, you know, roll out right. to support uh, them to expand uh, so that they can take advantage of some of you know the opportunities we have as a country uh, to create jobs and also to expand uh, their own uh, businesses mm. i think after that meeting mm. somewhere around 2015 2016 mm. um, the agi uh, met with him again mm. to thank him for you know extending you know uh, the stimulus packages that he promised them mm. uh, in that first year of his government uh, 26 million dollars i think was what was allocated for the pharmaceutical industry alone mm. and a number of uh, the pharmaceutical industries you know benef ben benefited from that package ns chemists uh, tobinko dan adams dan x kama and kina pharma were the beneficiaries of the 26 million dollars right. that was allocated so that they could expand mm. and also uh, produce uh, medicines that we had competitive advantage over mm. uh, you know locally 
and 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 I think it went a long way to support them. The, so in the early so, days of the MPP government as well, yeah. they they gave uh, some tax holidays, yeah. you know, some fifty percent tax holidays yeah. to pharmaceutical and, and big pharma companies. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. So I'm saying that these are things that you know should be continuous. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should not. It shouldn't be because we have a crisis that okay. we are meeting some of these industry uh, players. That relationship between the industry okay. and government mm. must be must that. must be such that um, um, they can walk into each other and have meetings often, every now and then, because that kind of relationship is what will 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 resolve the economic challenges uh, that we have in this country and also the infrastructure deficit mm. that we have as a country because people in industry tend to you know uh, have the ideas and then the government also have the leverage mm. so when you put them together so i think that it's it's a good meeting okay. but it should not just be a meeting uh, called because of this crisis right. it's a meeting is 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 a meeting that must be encouraged even beyond how, how uh, frequently uh, this, should the, we be the, having this, such this meetings crisis. i i cannot i cannot i cannot annually maybe yeah i think annually should be good i think annually will be fine mm. considering the 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 busy schedules of both you know the, the mm. this 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 industry players yeah. and the presidency right. they are all very busy mm. people so but i think annually will be good so that ideas you know around the table are shared my brother said that uh, the, the only difference, I mean, he agreed that governments in the past also supported and gave stimulus mm -hmm. package and that the only difference now is that it is targeted and it is, it is uh, I think it's not entirely correct with but all I'm respect. speaking to the one district, one factor. Yes, to it's, one district, it's, one it's, it's, and, it's, uh, it's not targeted, okay. it's hyped. That's the only really? difference. It's hyped. You know, it's but it's, uh, yesterday, for example, the president said, "Look, the issue of hand sanitizers mm -hmm. that has become a problem on a global global market mm -hmm. because of high demand. Mm -hmm. We we're going to support the pharmaceutical companies to be able to produce them locally here, mm -hmm. so that in the case we have a worst case scenario, we don't have to be scrambling for it. We have it here. We use so, it. So, Johnny, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's if, we, if we had, that's, if we had, no, if we had these." Meetings. Remember, I told you about the meeting in 2013 right. with President Mahama, right. which was followed with a 26 million dollars, mm. you know, stimulus package to the companies. So I'm saying that if we had these meetings, you know, uh, regularly with our government, mm. we wouldn't have had to now be thinking of how to produce hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it would have already been, the, the companies would have already been in a situation. Mm -hmm. You have other, in other countries where companies themselves are volunteering and producing some of these very essentials as their contribution to the fight, to the nation's fight mm -hmm. against the virus. So mm -hmm. I'm saying that, I mean, if you had continued okay. with that relationship mm -hmm. that started where government gave them a stimulus package of $26 million okay. to expand, okay. It would have just been a call away, you know, okay. look, this is the crisis we have. Mm. And they would have also acknowledged the support that governments have been given and quickly would have mobilized themselves to, to yeah. produce what is needed to support government okay. fight against the disease. Great. So I'm saying that it is, it is, it is in this case, mm. hyped mm. because even though previous governments did this without a coinage mm. of one you know district one factory you seem to have a problem with that no i don't have a problem okay. i'm just saying i'm just noting the okay. difference okay. i don't have a problem okay. the difference that is that it existed in both regimes yes. that one is hyped one is hyped okay. one is one is there's a coinage that's one district one factory but you go beneath it and it is the same stimulus package is the same you know government support and facilitation okay. that other governments you know, in the past, provided for industry. Okay. That's the point I'm making. Thank you. So that's just the difference. But I'm saying that these meetings it should be must be encouraged right. and, and, and must continue. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be called only when we are in crisis as we are point, in. Point well it should be called like it used to be called, oh. but, uh, even but, when we're not in crisis, but, and support point well given made. after but, ideas but, but, but are we, shared. We need to be factual about these mm. things. This is not the first time that His Excellency President is meeting Captain Trump Industry. Mm. Indeed, I have here a GBC report mm. of March 28, 2017. Mm. That was the initial President, one. Yes. Mm. President where, where, like following, following the... So the it cannot be the of, case that the Excellency the President are meeting captains of industry because there's a global pandemic. Mm. 
as is being suggested by Al Hassan. Okay. That's not the that's Thank not the case. Thank you. But you see, you, you are no. taking another minute. I wanted us to move on. Very well. On. Very Thank well. You. It's fine. No, no, let, I'm okay. Let's, I mean, let's we will talk. have many other opportunities I know. to deal with some of these I matters. Know. So if I don't get there, I know, but you, but I, mean, it, it's I think that around this table, we have all agreed that yeah. these meetings are yeah. good. Yeah. We need to go ahead yeah. in that. But motion. to suggest that it's never been the case in the past. Oh, but you have because you cited only one instance with the that's ATS of the NDC government. That's your interpretation. Okay. But that's exactly what you Th said. Let's, that's your interpretation. Let's talk about parliament. <laughs> let's talk about parliament. <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned about uh, you, my brothers, in parliament. Um, we are being told to observe safety protocols out there. In parliament, you sit closer together. And the, you are in the chamber, literally. I know that the public galleries is being shut out to, to the public. But for those of you who legislate for us, who plan all the laws and, and look at it, the allies and everything else, I'm worried about you. Are you equally worried about yourselves, Babu? Of course, I am worried. Uh, except that, I guess that uh, the work has got to be done. And so when we adopt the protocols, mm. you know, uh, sneeze, cough in our sleeves mm. and all that, we may be able to minimize. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I didn't go to parliament yesterday. Why? You were scared? Well, not scared, but mm. I was of the view that parliament was not going to sit okay. because of His Excellency the President's Okay, directive. directive, okay. But subsequently, I saw online Mm. Uh, Facebook like that Parliament was actually in session and so I'm planning to go today the Parliament okay but I guess that it's important mm. because parliamentarians travel uh, as part of our work mm. occasionally out of Ghana right and uh, some members have been out into jurisdictions where the disease is widespread and have returned mm. in the not too distant past so are we going to encourage those persons to engage in some self-quarantine right. for now? Or that all of them are required to come in, into parliament as well? Mm. I think that some self-quarantine for people who have just returned from the country would provide some comfort okay. for other members of parliament who are not exposed mm. by way of having traveled as. Of course, I mean, we come into contact with people in here as well mm -hmm. who have gone and come back. Yeah. So you never know. But to the extent that no report mm -hmm. of an infected person has been reported from Parliament, mm -hmm. I guess that the first step would be to discourage those who just returned to Ghana to, come. to stay <laughs> out for some days, you know, uh, and, and not come into the chamber mm -hmm. to put people to rest that, look, mm -hmm. well, all of us who are here have been in Ghana all this while, uh, and so chances of us or any of us being infected mm -hmm. may be lower. But like I said, I mean, I am aware that some legislation is going to be introduced that necessarily would be directed towards the fight against okay. this pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so you can't absent yourself. Okay. You know, so uh, we would all go the, the to legislation to enforce what the president has said. Yes, some of them. Like public uh, gatherings. Absolutely. Uh, and and of course, I, I am not so sure, but I guess that we'll get to know uh, the details, in a day or okay. two, the details as mm -hmm. to whether, because bear in mind that no specific appropriation was made for this $100 million in the mm -hmm. budget. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some contingency funding that right. is provided for government to meet mm -hmm. some exigencies. As to whether that amount is sufficient for this purpose, mm -hmm. we are not aware. Okay. And so it may be important that as the president directed the finance minister to mm -hmm. look for the money, mm -hmm some additional appropriation will have to be made. I, I don't know. But if those come up, mm. then you need members of parliament to be present to ensure that we provide the requisite authorization for government to be able to fund the activities in relation to this pandemic so that uh, provide some assurance and safety for... The so the bottom line is that it's impossible to, to shut down where? parliament. I we, guess we that... We can't have virtual meetings. Well, we haven't gotten to the stage where we can have virtual meetings. I, I know that we, there's I some. I we had digitized parliament. I, well, I said well, we haven't gotten there. Okay. There's uh, some ongoing process okay. to uh, uh, even digitize the entire parliamentary proceedings. Mm. Uh, it hasn't been rolled out yet. We've gone for some training okay. in that regard, okay. but actual implementation hasn't commenced. Okay. And so when that comes up, mm. I guess that maybe, and even that, I don't know to what extent that 
it allows for virtual meetings. Okay. It's just electronic or if you like digitizing the parliamentary proceedings. Okay. Okay, so so um but I guess that like I said at the beginning, uh, what's gotta be done. So mm -hmm. we just have to go and do what we have to do and be cautious. Okay. And uh, observe the due protocols mm -hmm. as has been rolled out okay. so that we all remain safe. So any are you as worried as I am? <laughs> well, um, Johnny, I think that, um, like I began by sharing the good news, uh, it's supposed to let us all um, be cautious, mm. but not um, um, panic, but not stupid. Okay. We can be cautious, <laughs> but not oh, stupid. Yeah, you know, so um, if work has to be done, um, and you know the protocols that you need to observe mm. to still carry out the work that is expected of you in the national interest. Mm. Uh, I think that the risk is worth it. My worry has to do with um, some other activities that are uh, currently uh, being carried out. What, what are that, these? that makes it difficult for some protocols to be observed. What are for these? example, the National Identification Authority. Okay and the reported registration that is still ongoing okay. in the Eastern region. Mm. I mean, even if you see the pictures of how the people are seated right. and guarded, and the officers who are manning these equipment mm. and the exposure to the crowds, mm. I think it's difficult in such a, an environment okay. to ask people to observe the protocols that we are told so it must stop should be them. observed. So, these are activities that I do not think must continue, mm. you know, under under the circumstance. Okay. And I want to join many other voices who, who, I mean, that have called on the National Identification Authority to suspend the exercise with immediate effect. Mm. In fact, I have read somewhere this morning that some of the officers themselves uh, feeling uh, uh, at risk are mm. packing and leaving you know uh, the registration centers mm -hmm. and i think it is for their own good that they do that because you do not know how or where you are going to get this 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 from and with such crowds i think we must uh, discourage it as much as mm -hmm. possible and i agree with uh, my honorable colleague that uh, work has to be done in mm -hmm. parliament like the president spoke of the uh, article 22 uh, uh, of the you know, 1992 constitution mm. that will ensure that some of these emergency measures uh, are legislated on will have to come to parliament and we will need to be there. But what we'll suggest, for example, that again, uh, some who have traveled out to yeah. jurisdictions that have recorded cases yeah. must self quarantine them? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will speak to that also. Again, if you listen to uh, the flag bearer of the NDC yesterday, mm. he also uh, made some appeals to the president. For example, the need for him to account to the people of Ghana uh, the possible impact of this on the economy okay. through parliament mm -hmm. so that uh, we are all uh, alert mm -hmm. of how this is going to affect the economy. For example, we already know mm -hmm. the, 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 the oil prices, right. uh, the crude prices, mm -hmm. uh, and how it has come down drastically mm -hmm. as against the projections that the finance minister gave in the budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Kama, they say sometimes, uh, is something I don't want to, to use. But mm -hmm. I recall when uh, Honorable Sir Tepe missed his target some mm -hmm. time ago, how he was taken to the cleaners by Mr. Ken Foriata and others about how the projection was not realistic and how could Ghana miss our projection by that margin. You see, that I mean, fast forward, pandemic, was fa there? fast forward, there was, there was, there was, there were wars, <laughs> you know. Mm. Fast forward, you have a situation where they pegged it at about 56 to mm. 58, I think, dollars a barrel, and it's now selling at 30 dollars. So it's going to have a serious hit on government revenue. So it's important that the president, uh, or at least the finance minister, explain to us, and I'm happy the president, as part of the meeting yesterday, some of the, you know, industry players mm. were part of it. Mm. Perhaps they will also be sharing with the president how this is going it's to hit them. their business and hit the economy mm. by extension. So the president will need parliament to be certain okay. for him to uh, do 
what is expected of him. We also want to know uh, how, for example, the $100 million is going to be spent okay. uh, uh, to ensure have our, no idea how our, our safety. We don't know we, yet. Well, the president has said that we're going to use that for uh, infrastructural yeah. uh, expansion, yeah. materials, consumables, yeah. and, and all of that. Yeah, so you will need okay. a breakdown. Yeah. So you will need a breakdown, okay. you know, and, and that can happen in Parliament. As for members who have traveled to affected countries, mm. uh, last Friday during business statement, I made an appeal to the speaker um, to uh, cause for uh, members who had returned from affected countries to undergo some mandatory tests. I requested speaker to But, but to I thought direct the, the government health service had written a long letter to all public institutions to ensure that, enforce that. So yeah. why is it not being done? Why, yeah. why must we make an appeal before? Yes. So I, 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 don't, I don't remember Speaker commenting on it, but I made an appeal to him to ensure that members who had just returned uh, were either uh, quarantined or made to self-quarantine okay. or at least, you know, undertaking uh, through a mandatory test mm. so that we know if we are safe uh, in the chamber. And Johnny, there's another area. F finally, so yes, finally, there's another area um, that I find disturbing, which is the directive to um, churches mm. and mocks. I'm very happy with the response that the churches mm. and the mocks right. are, you know, giving. Yeah. It shows that we are all willing to make sacrifices. Mm. Uh, even religious sacrifices, Why? so that we can reduce the impact and the effect of this disease. Mm. I'm very happy right. that we are making that. But, what's but what's my, challenge? my challenge is why in the midst of that, mm. we do not think that a place that for me, mm. that for me, if you compare to the mocks and church, mm. is a high risk place okay. to transmit this disease. Mm. It's not banned, but edge to observe protocols, Which like please? the ninth club. Okay. You see, in the mocks and in the church, contact can be regulated. Mm. People are expected to be, to put up their best behaviors mm. in church and in mocks. Mm. So contacts can even be regulated. Right. But because we are not sure mm. of how we will regulate contact, we have decided to ban, you know, uh, public gatherings in churches and mocks. Of course, somebody, churches, somebody will come up and say he has some oil that can cure That's coronavirus. what I'm saying. That I'm saying, But it can be regulated. Right. Mm. But I'm saying that because we are not sure okay. that we can regulate it, we ban it. We ban it. Contact is not, is not a must. Mm. It's not compulsory. Okay. It's, not, it's, not, it's something you can avoid so in you, a church or mock situation. Compared to a ninth club, okay. contact is something that is difficult to avoid in a ninth club. Mm. It's very difficult to avoid contact. Do you understand? Okay, so. And people get to sweat because they are dancing. Right. Fluids mm. can be exchanged. So, to in the midst of their fear, mm. ignore the fact that behavior can be better regulated mm. in the mocks and church and shut it down, which is good. Mm. I don't get the sense. I don't understand the reason okay. why we will leave a place like the ninth club where behavior and conduct is difficult to regulate. Okay. I think that I think that it should as a matter of agency be added to all the. That list. would include the malls then, because people go to the malls. You're, again, you're again, that no, again, down. again. In the malls, you don't go to the malls to bump your bodies okay. on each other. Mm. In the ninth club, I'm saying it's difficult. it's difficult. Even when you don't want anyone to, to bump, it, it's difficult not to have contact. Okay. Point but well in the made. malls, you can, you can regulate right. contact. Okay. And this is a Johnny, contact mm. disease. Bo okay. Johnny, Bobo, uh, thank you. So really, I've, I've I've think, had, I think that's I've it. I've the propaganda mm. that our friends... No, hold on, hold on. We are all in this fight oh, together. Please, 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 please. My brother, don't please. do that. Let me, let me allow, make allow my him point. to make anyway. his point. You've made yours. Okay, we sat here and you tell us what the former president did. We sat in Doomsaw for four years. Did he account to the people of Ghana oh, on the impact on the economy? Oh, my God. Oh, he? I, I Look, I'm coming. No, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Look, I'm prepared for us to have a dispassionate conversation. Okay. We have been told 
that all the guidelines that have been ruled out mm. are subject to review even daily. Okay. Daily. In any event, look, Johnny, are you going to go to a nightclub in the midst of this? People would. I, I asked you. I don't go to the nightclub. Yes, so. I don't either. But I go to church. And so, maybe based on the advice from the experts that mm. look, chances of people congregating at nightclubs mm. may not be as much. And so, ban churches which have a level of compulsion because of our faith, mm. that we all go to church on that. I, I dare not decide not to go to church on a Sunday in my house. You, you, you understand? Mm. And so, maybe it was important at the time, but as the days go by, mm. it is possible for that decision to be reviewed. Have, have we got into that and point? So, have no, we got into no, that point? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I mean, I'm not an I, expert. I, 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 Hold on. What's what what wrong if I suggest it? It wasn't you. a suggestion you made. We all read your comments on social media. Oh, my comment. Not you. Your party people. <laughs> but he's the here. fund that they are making <laughs> with respect to the decision oh, to ban nice. churches and mosques and leave out nightclubs. Haven't you seen some of the comments on social media? Okay, but I'm saying that you see, we are building a cathedral. Of course, we'll build a cathedral, not with your money. Of course, but whose money? Well, we've indicated to the people of Ghana where the funds are going to come from. The land is my land. Yes, the, the state the has made a contribution. Let's, let's, not, let's not digress. Look, let's not digress. Look, let's, let's not digress. Look, look, look. The let's, land is the land of every Ghanaian. That's our money. You'll be surprised. I was in a committee meeting okay. last week, and I said it here last week. A member of the NDC excited that the prices of crude oil was dropping. Really? I'm telling you, it's happy because government revenue is going to be impacted. And then what happens? Because yeah, the consumer is going to pay less. Then you cannot execute the programs of government. Export price. Look, Johnny, Johnny, don't you get happy you, when it comes out? You hosted Jinapur mm. and... Uh, don't you get happy uh, when it comes out? What's wrong with that? We all do. Oh, really? As a consumer of uh, <laughs> petroleum products, when the really? crude price go down... But I'm telling you the, where the excitement where, of that somebody, particular is coming yes. from. You are, you are, maybe you are impugning... No, no, allow him. He, he had him. Allow him. He's this, impugning this. that motive. No, 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 He's <laughs> impugning that motive. Oh, now I will tell you the person who will get off, off air. You are impugning okay, that. It's inappropriate for me to disclose that identity. Of course, it's not. And it's not the first time that I've said it. Then it's inappropriate to even marry to say that here. Happy. It's inappropriate. So it tells you what the extent we go because of politics. Okay. And we are prepared for our country to suffer revenue loss because government will be unable to execute this program. Thank you. Page 13 of the Daily Graphic. Mission hospitals face power disconnection. And this is particularly worrying to me because in the face of COVID-2019, where uh, we expect every health center to be up and running, we're reading that about 51 mission hospitals across the country are faced with the threat of being disconnected from power supply because they owe electricity providers. Some of the health facilities, which are members of the Christian Health Association of Ghana, electricity providers between 3,000 and 3 million Ghana cities. A situation which has already resulted in the disconnection of the power to some of the facilities. Now, he, the debt is blamed largely on the NHIA, uh, NHIS, and the context in which the bishop spoke, uh, the most reverend Joseph K. Afrifa Jekum, he spoke. He says that, um, uh, bring your mind, he's, he, ap he appealed to the government to direct the utility companies to immediately suspend the disconnection exercise and call for dialogue among it. And uh, But the ECG also says they can't do concessions for you. You either come to the table and negotiate or we shut you down because once you use power you must pay for it the bishop is talking about threat to life and saying that literally that will be a death sentence to people who are on admission at the hospitals in the face of covid 2019 what should we do so you need to take this first and then uh, we'll go to bobo you know um the national health insurance scheme has been sustained in the last three years largely by a lot of propaganda and rhetoric but the evidence on the ground that is felt by the service providers and the utilizers mm. if i am allowed to call them uh, as such uh, tells a different story every now and then you will hear the scheme is working again as if to say the scheme was never working when it when when this government came into power but 
clearly utilization is dropping um the debts are piling up okay um renewals when you know cards expire are becoming more difficult mm. in fact i heard of a very sad story uh, this week what did you hear i think it was last week rather where a man passed away mm -hmm. at the headquarters of the national health insurance scheme because he had gone there to renew his card in a situation that was already bad he was not feeling well i think and the family brought him i mean and and these are stories of people across the country the frustration they go through mm -hmm. to even renew their national health insurance card because sometimes ribbons are not there because sometimes even forms are not there mm. and the debt in the volta region alone i'm told over 32 million ghana cities is what is owed to service providers there mm. only uh, last month uh, the service providers threatened mm. to withdraw services the christian uh, uh, health, health service yeah. the, all of them they threatened to withdraw services but you see, sometimes maybe for their love for their patients and the need to serve, mm. they continue under the difficult circumstances to still provide health care. The, 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 the bishop, for example, is saying that they are supposed to be a subvented, uh, subvented entities. Yeah. But ECG, for example, charges them commercial rates instead of charging them, you know, subsidized rates that subvented uh, institutions are supposed to get. They're also saying that, look, beyond all of this, they tariff structure of the NHIS itself mm. is not working for them. Mm. And the withdrawal of subsidies mm. for electricity from the NHI is also not coming. Mm. So it's a multiplicity of, of issues. You see, not all just of this, all of renewal this. and yeah. because they are old, they can't pay. That's the uh, question is, if I go and buy chocolate or cocoa dairy from the supermarket Johnny, Johnny. is deducted instantaneously Johnny, I understand where does the money go what I'm saying is that if the national health insurance scheme is working appropriately and reimbursing these hospitals for the service that they provide mm. to the patients that come to them on time mm. I am sure they can have a relationship with the ECG okay that will not lead to a situation where they will disconnect them, even if they are going to owe. But there will be some kind of arrangement where, because they know they get regular payment from the National Health Insurance, mm -hmm. which is working, mm -hmm. if it is working, they can also have part of what is coming from the National Health Insurance paying because it's part of the bills that they incur right. in running or, or providing service. So if they don't get paid, mm -hmm. they are going to have problems with that all it other. Work. And, and, and it's not working. I'm talking about the indebtedness that has led to, you know, th these institutions threatening sometimes to return to cash and carry. So perhaps it is time that this government gets off the high horse of propaganda and fix the problems. Look, NHIS has never been perfect. It's always been work in progress. Why, why, why can't it be perfect? Because there is a funding gap. There is a funding gap. And the scheme... Who? No, it created by it, it, it. Let me say it's 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 consumed by its own growth. Mm. It's when it started, the projection mm. of people who were going to be on it mm -hmm. perhaps was underestimated, okay. and so the funding source was that limited. Mm. Now there is a need for us mm. to increase revenue to the scheme mm. because the numbers of people who are beginning to utilize it has grown exponentially okay so it is it is not the doing of anybody mm. it is just the growth of of the scheme mm. that is leading to a need for us to increase funding to the scheme but as 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 as, as because of the nature of our politics mm. When the previous government identified this after doing some actual actual you know mm. uh, uh, science projections mm and wanted to find how to tackle that funding gap. The funding gap that led to some of these discrepancies where payments are delayed and all of that was hyped as you know, evidence of a collapse scheme. The, the MPP came Only for the over MPP, 500 million. Which they have denied, which, which the service providers have denied. 
Read. I'm saying that they have, they, when they came into office, mm. instead of maybe because of the, the denial of the fact, they could not come to terms with dealing with the fact. So they, didn't so they continued money. to write on the propaganda. They, they paid some money. Because I remember the health minister said they paid over I'm 500 saying, but, million. But the amount five mentioned, billion. 5 billion, but the amount they mentioned billion. was challenged. 1.5 billion, yes. Okay, it was challenged by, 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 by the service providers. Mm. Read again. It was challenged. You know, and, and so I'm saying that if you continue with the propaganda, instead of tackling the nitty gritties, the real problem, you're not going to deal with the challenges that the skin What help is there for, for these hospitals, the patients who are there? If, for example, a COVID-2019 case is rushed there, what help is there? The light is off, possibly the doctors may not be there, the nurses, what, what help? You know, it's a sad situation, but you cannot say the ECG should not also take money for electricity. They have said they will take the money. Because if they don't take the money, mm -hmm. we, they will also run into difficulties uh, like we are beginning to experience with Doomsway mm -hmm. and all of that. So they also have to get paid. <laughs> but you need to know... Doomsway is not back. That's what we've been told. <laughs> is Doomsway back? Doomsway is not back. Johnny, yes, last night I slept in darkness. Uh, that, I don't know what is that, that is. Doom so? two, two nights ago, I slept in darkness. I don't know what that is. Okay, thank Please, you. Please, let's not do this sometimes because no. of the politics. Oh, no, I don't no, know. No. Me, I don't know. You, me, I don't know, but I, last night... But they said the doom saw is not back. I don't know, but last night I slept... I don't know what it is called, okay. but I slept in darkness, and I wasn't the only one. Okay. My neighborhood and others slept in darkness. Okay. Three nights ago, we slept in darkness. I don't know what that is. If you say I shouldn't call it doom saw because they have told you, you doom saw is not back. But have you, you said they have told you to so have you I, say it. I, I asked and we're told that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, but I'm just you, saying. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, no, but you see, the point, the, point, the, point, the point, let me just wrap yeah, up sure. on that. I'm saying that. I'm saying that we need, first of all, to find additional funding for the National Health Insurance Scheme. Okay. Once that is done, and then perhaps also reduce the wastage okay. in the utilization of available funds. Mm -hmm that the fund the scheme is currently working with okay. if we do that we will pay the service providers and perhaps we can even sit down and increase some of the rates that we pay them because some of the 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 the, the, the i think the tariffs, the, the yeah, tariffs yeah, have tariffs. not been reviewed for years now yeah. and so you will even send the money to the hospital and it's not enough to uh, cater for the services that they have provided okay so Let's do something about mm. the scheme and stop the propaganda. I, I, I would wish that we, like the Canadians have done, we do a lot of campaign. I know the Ghana Health Service started this regenerative health campaign to ensure that we are all healthier so that there's not over-dependence on the NHIS. But as but it, it stands it, now... It's unbelievable. Eh? It's, it's, but, but, but this, this, this is a serious us, matter. The people who promised us, the people of Ghana, mm. that we're going to do a one-term premium payment mm. are today telling us that we need to find additional funding to fix the NHIS. Look, and I'm surprised. Look, the question that you posed was simple. Mm. Yes, we all know that the repayment rate of claims mm. is not instantaneous. It goes through a certain cycle. Right. And so there's always a default mm. okay, period where the service providers are not paid. Mm. But if we are in a global pandemic, okay. We have COVID-19 to deal with. Mm. And ECG is threatening mission hospitals which can provide some support to people who fall ill. Okay? Mm. I thought that that was what we're going to deal with. Right. Rather than go on the tangent on running down the NHIS that you left in comatose. That's a matter of fact. That this government has had to make them Look, the head of NHIS appeared before the finance committee, mm. I believe it was in November or uh, December, and indicated quite clearly that, look, there are some legacy payments that makes them unable to meet all their recurrent costs. Okay. Okay. The claims that are brought before. Absolutely. Mm. Because there are some legacy arrears that are still sitting on their books. Mm. And so what it is that they do is they try to pay those down try to stay current as much as possible mm. and use some of your revenue to pay down some of the legacy debts. We don't know the period with which this debt that the mission hospitals are owed has been outstanding from. But for me, it's important that we have a dialogue with the ECG mm. to 
give them some reprieve that look, we are not in normal times. You can't shut down all the mission hospitals because they owe you electricity. Yes, by all means, you ought to get them to pay, no doubt. But is it the time that you ought to, as it were, disconnect these facilities easy, from power easy, supply? You would say, well, we also buy. But Johnny, I don't have a problem. But I'm saying that so, we need so, to go and so it's important for government to do something about it. Right. I am prepared to make that concession. Mm. Okay, that look, we cannot allow these mission hospitals to close, particularly at this time, right. because of want of payment of electricity bills. Right. And so, by all means, let the dialogue happen so that we can find a solution to this problem now. But let it not be said that the NHIS that you left is better than the NHIS that we have today. Look, ah, is, it the, is, it the regional, is it the national headquarters that people do renew us at? It's much, much better. NHIS, mm. they do renew us at national headquarters. But that's what he wants us to believe. Mm. Is it not even renew us done today mm -hmm. via, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, Mobile phones. Mobile phones. Mm -hmm. eh? It's not happening in this country. But you come and sit here, paint a picture as if to say that somebody went to die at the NHIS headquarters because they went there to go and renew their car. Is that what they do? Car renewals at? What was the bottom line for the patient on a bed now in the Christian hospital? That's why I said that it's important for some urgent intervention to be made. Okay. Some dialogue between them the Ghana Health Service, if possible, NHIS, and mm. the electricity company okay. of Ghana to find a solution now so that their lives can be kept on, at least for this period that we are in some uh, sense of crisis. Okay, you know, I Thank have you. a tax for you. I, I hope I you do it as, as yes. a media. Okay. Check how much National Health Insurance was owed. Okay. Was owing. Mm. How much arrears it was in okay. before 2016. Mm. And check how much arrears, I mean, how many months, mm -hmm. I should put it that way, arrears. Okay. Now, okay. because if Bobo says that it is better, it is better and it was in Kamoto's, okay. it was in Kamoto State in 2016, mm -hmm. check the number of months okay. the we'll, service we'll, providers we'll, were owed we'll, before we'll 2016, we'll and, and, and then use the you. number of months they are owed today, okay. and get back to your, we'll, we'll get your back, listeners. We'll, we'll do, we'll because do it's not only the coronavirus that is a crisis. You know, thank you, thank you very much. Electricity is not there, water is not there. It's in darkness for okay. four years. Water uh, Andrew we don't have water. Water. Is, you have light is the you member of parliament for the second D constituency. Oh He's been here on the ticket of the NPP and also Honorable Alasan Suini, is at MP for Tamale North. He's been here on the ticket of the NP, uh, NDC. Sorry about that. The coronavirus prevention measures here for you. Wash your hands regularly with soap and under running water carefully. Um, cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. Immediately dispose of the no, tissue be, be what you use to sneeze or cough and stay at home when you feel but sick and avoid contacting people who you suspect might be ill or may have it and let's all stay safe. Uh, 